I also feel like we're getting bamboozled. It's been weeks and Charlotte the Stingray in Hendersonville, North Carolina still has not given birth to her shark ray pups. And I feel like they might be lying to us. Is anyone else with me? How did it come to this? How did a pregnant stingray become such a viral internet sensation that we have TikTokers, people who don't care about stingrays at all, are eagerly awaiting the birth of her babies. I don't really think that I would normally care about this, but I care about this right now. We have conspiracy theories, misinformation, crazy headlines. This story has it all. So let's dive into it. Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tally's Marine Tales. For those who don't know, I am a marine biologist who specifically studies stingrays. Those little sea pancakes are my jam, so I have been eagerly watching the story of Charlotte the Stingray unfold. I'm sure you've heard of it, it has made the headlines, it even made it onto Saturday Night Live. Michael, Michael, boy do I have some news for you. You gonna be a daddy! What? <laughs> Stop playing. No, you stop playing. I, I'm a little on edge right now. All this attention this is a lot for me. And so I did do a brief short on the story when it first broke, but I wanted to dive into it in a little bit more detail because I love stingrays. So if there's a stingray doing the rounds on the internet, I want to talk about it. And I do really find it just like a little microcosm example of how truly weird and crazy the internet can be. Now, this story broke just before Valentine's Day where Team Echo from an aquarium in Hendersonville announced that Charlotte, the round stingray, was pregnant. And round referring to her species name, not because of the fact that she's round because she's pregnant. But what made this story interesting was that she fell pregnant without being around a male. She's been alone in her tank without a male stingray for I think eight years or something like that. So everybody was like, well, how did she fall pregnant then? Now, this whole story became a mess right at the start when, during the announcement of the pregnancy, Brenda Raymer, who's the executive director of the aquarium, made a comment stating that Charlotte only became pregnant once they put two sharks into the tank with her. Now, I'm not really too sure what she meant by this comment, whether she was just kind of making a bit of a joke or whether she truly believed that these sharks could have impregnated Charlotte the Stingray, but Obviously, the internet went absolutely wild with the headlines of shark impregnates stingray. I mean, come on, sting shark, shark ray, sure ray. You can see why this would have captured the imagination of the public. And I do think it was a little bit silly and even irresponsible of Rayma to put this idea out into the world because now you have these clickbaity headlines doing the rounds and they have absolutely zero truth to them because any real marine scientist will tell you that it is absolutely impossible for charlotte the stingray to have become impregnated by one of those sharks they are not compatible on a biological level genetic level i mean they even have different reproductive systems whereas charlotte will give birth to live pups these sharks in the tank lay eggs so just like completely incompatible Yes, they are closely related on an evolutionary level and they fall under the same group known as elasmobranchs, but it's not like you having shenanigans with your cousin. It's more like you having shenanigans with a lemur. That's the kind of genetic levels of similarity we are talking about. So, impossible. Now, actually, a little side story. One of the comments I got on my short was somebody said, well, hey, I mean, humans have sex with all kinds of weird things, so why can't sharks have sex with something that is, like, not their species? Um, and the reason for this is that sharks don't have sex for pleasure. There's actually very few species in the animal kingdom that have sex for pleasure. We're one of them, but there's also things like dolphins and bonobos. And I actually think it is only uh, mammals that have been shown to have sex for pleasure. So for sharks, really, it's just about getting the job done. It's about carrying on their, you know, their lineage. So the guy will get in, do his business, deposit the sperm and get out. And it's actually a pretty rough affair, like especially for the females, the shark, the male will bite onto her and hold her, often injure her. So it's not like something fun for them. So a male shark is not just going to look at something completely different and be like, I could tap that. Not going to happen. Anyway, 
Back to Charlotte, the stingray. Now the internet is going wild with shark impregnate stingray headlines. All of us as marine scientists are going wild trying to rebut these headlines and trying to like just put it out there that this is really, really impossible. And so the reputable news sites suddenly realize that, okay, we can't run with these headlines anymore. So now they have to start running with stories with this really boring, complicated science word, parthenogenesis and all of a sudden everybody's getting a basic biology lesson and learning that female sharks and rays can actually impregnate themselves without any sperm input from a male which is super flippin' cool. And the story slowly starts to change and people are getting behind the whole, you know, Charlotte doing it on her own aspect of the story. Um, although there are still some people who are hoping for shark ray babies, but it's not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. And I personally really liked this Wired article's take on why TikTok and the internet has become so obsessed with Charlotte and her babies. For obvious reasons, the internet loves this shit. It's mystery plus science plus potentially horny sea creatures all in one story. Also, Stingray Jesus sounds cool, like a band on an episode of The Simpsons. In one TikTok, Kayla Gratzer says Charlotte potentially mating with the shark has queen energy. Her video has more than 11 million views. Amanda, a TikToker in Glasgow, noted, My girl just spent her best years girl bossing and pursuing her career until she decided the time was right. Her post has more than 1.4 million views. Everyone, it seems, is Team Charlotte. On Tuesday, Alabama's Supreme Court ruled that destruction of a frozen embryo could make someone liable for wrongful death. Critics of the move claim it could have a chilling effect on people seeking in vitro fertilization, and the state's largest hospital is already putting a hold on such treatments following the court's decision. At a time when humans are trying to restrict other people's reproductive decisions, a stingray getting pregnant on her own has real folk hero potential. Last year, it was White Gladys, the orca who rammed rich people's boats. This year, everyone wants to call Charlotte mother. So Charlotte's queen energy has the internet waiting with bated breath for her to deliver those stingray Jesus babies. <laughs> Good morning, sweet girl. If this fucking stingray doesn't give birth today i'm gonna need to be booked into a 48 hour hold but this is kind of where the aquarium messed up the story a second time and they gave an expected date of birth for charlotte saying that she was likely going to have her babies in the last week of february they said it could probably take a bit longer but they kind of said last week of february is when they were expecting the babies to come so people were lining up people were waiting with bated breath but now we are halfway through march Charlotte still hasn't had her babies, and we are starting to see responses like these crop up. This is how we got to this point. And again, I think it is just another silly move made by the aquarium because this is the first time this parthenogenesis or virgin birth has been recorded in the species, um, in the round stingray. And so truly, they really have no idea of when she is going to have her baby or babies. I think it's just one at, one at present. Um, and... I think they were just playing into this media hype, this media attention and not being true and honest and not saying we're actually just not sure. And the worst part is, and truly it gives me no pleasure in saying this, but there is kind of a big chance that her offspring is not even going to survive. You know, this parthenogenesis virgin birth thing, it's not the most ideal mode of reproduction. They kind of only use it as a last resort and oftentimes the offspring aren't viable. Raymer herself noted that the bamboo shark in their tanks has experienced parthenogenesis 14 times and none of the offspring have survived at long term. Scientific studies that have investigated parthenogenesis in sharks showed that in some of these cases, females have produced several healthy offspring over multiple reproductive cycles. And although in many cases, the mortality rate across the litters was very high, more than 80%, some other pups were able to live for at least five years. So I am really hoping that these Jesus Stingray babies are going to survive because I think the internet and the world just needs like this cool news story, but it's gonna be a real letdown if they don't. Anyway, despite the fact that I think the aquarium kind of handled the story a little bit messily, I am still very stoked that a stingray is finally getting some time in the spotlight, getting some media attention in a positive way. 
The last time a stingray got this much media attention was when Steve Irwin got killed by one and that was like a really gave stingrays a really bad rap which is unfortunate because they are super cool animals and really are not that dangerous. If you're interested to learn more about them, check out my video here where I tackle if they're dangerous or not um, and some other really fun facts about them. And I hope that going into the future, when I tell people that I study stingrays, instead of them telling me the whole Steve Irwin story, I hope the story is now going to shift to Charlotte the Stingray because it's a much cooler story. So come on Charlotte, we're all rooting for you. We're waiting for those beautiful Stingray Jesus babies to come on out. Uh, the aquarium is posting somewhat regular updates on what is happening with Charlotte under the handle Team Echo. So go follow them if you're interested to keep up to date with the story. And if you're really, really impatient to see those Stingray babies, I'm gonna put a video here of a blue Stingray giving birth, just so you have something to watch while you're waiting. I don't know if you guys are interested in that or not. But um, I also just wanted to let you know that I am going to be in Florida for the next two months or so doing some work with the Moat Marine Labs that side. And so I'm going to try to post some shorts about my experience, but I'm probably not going to be able to post another long form content video for about two months. So please just bear with me. Um, thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.